So it's like a thousand million kilometers. What do you mean? By like accelerating and brake. Okay. So I know which one is straight away without having to ask someone. Okay. See how this one stands up. What do you mean? The other one, the car racing one, it wasn't, it just took off on its own. Come back, come back. <laughs> okay. Loading screens, especially in demos, are great opportunities to help educate players on what the key things are that they need to know to enjoy your, your game demo. Um, many times that will be, um, you know, what the controller configuration is and what buttons to press, but I could see that maybe you have a simple game and what's more important is not that they press A and use the left thumbstick because most users will figure that out, but it's more of the conceptual things that are more important to your game. This is a great opportunity to, to help players understand that so that they can get into your game quickly. The other thing that's key, actually a lot of games, or a lot of the demos now are doing this type of thing. What they're not all doing and what is really key is the second step and what the last, what the last person had to say. And that is give the player the time that they need to analyze this as much or as little as they want. Um, this is something that would be annoying if it were in a released game, and I think that's why when the demo gets made, people it doesn't necessarily get in, um, but in a demo, it's it's perfect. And um, 13 of the 14 participants uh, commented positively positively on being able to do this. The one who didn't claimed it didn't get him in the mood to play the game. Um, but uh, I, of, of all the problems that I saw, that's the last one I would worry about. Other recommendations, use the pause menu for aid. So here I'm going to talk about it in a little bit more detail. Uh, Do I have? Yeah. Half of the participants uh, went into the pause menu looking for a controller mapping when they got confused. This is a no-brainer. Have it there. Don't bury it under something like options, though, because only one person actually found it under there. The other thing is, and I talked about maybe objectives or even specific hints within the demo, um, placing those there. Why? Well, the reason is, is that if a player's going to quit your demo, they're going to do one of two things. They're going to press the power button on the console, or they're going to press start to find the quit button. If they press start, you've got one last opportunity to cap cap capture their attention or to show them something that they were struggling with. And again, in most cases, what tended to happen is people quit and wanted to quit because they were confused or frustrated or wanted to move on. So if it's clear from there, there's a place where you can see the controller. If it's clear from there, maybe there's a place to get a few more hints. Or uh, it's clear from there that there's a place to get objectives. It's a last chance to catch them. Um, again, looking for the controller mapping and options, in my experience, is something that about half the people will do. Uh, and that's just, I think it's learned over time that you know controller mappings tend to be there so that you can change them. And so maybe I can just go and at least see what's there. Uh, fewer people did that when they were actually looking for help, so it's not going to be a, you know, answer all your problems, uh, but it's pretty easy to do. You probably already have the screenshot, just get it in your menu or in the pause. I've already kind of covered this. Don't rely solely on the tutorial for teaching, so when available, seven of the 12 participants uh, viewed a tutorial. Only three of seven completed it. Part of that was that um, the four who didn't, it was the Command and Conquer tutorial, which, if anyone's played, it's actually quite long and quite complex. Uh, another recommendation that I had in, and I probably cut due to time, but I'm going to say it anyway, and maybe I'll run over, is, um, is to take a look at what you've put in your, your game, and when you cut down your demo, think about, is everything that I still have here, or everything I have here still needed, or are there things that, that could be cut out? Um, a lot of games, try, a lot of demos set up this 20-hour gameplay experience uh, for a 30-minute demo, and it really kind of messed with the pacing of the of the game. And it's much slower, and people people got bored and restless. I'm not saying don't cut your good stuff. I'm not saying Bioshock should like not show the story at the beginning of their demo because that's what you know that's a huge component of their game. But if there's things like an advanced tutorial, make it an advanced tutorial. Don't force users. To to sit through it just to play play the demo. Give them the basics of what they need. Um, biggest reason people gave for, for skipping things, I'll just jump in and figure it out as I go. So speaking of figuring out as I go along, um, 
Still not sure what to call it. Um, I call it hints as they play. This is basically where the game, I'm not talking about, say, Halo 1, where you're doing the hall crawl and you know you run into to some pipes that you need to jump over and it says jump over now, kind of that pre-planned tutorial built into the level. I'm talking more on like uh, Crackdown, where you jump into the game and you're running around the world and they're providing you with kind of hints and tips as you play. Hey, here's some things you might want to do. Often the engine is recognizing what the player is doing or not doing and giving them instruction uh, along the way. Uh, it definitely supports the player urge of just wanting to get in and play. The other pushback that I've gotten there is 
well, you know, we've got five different controller mappings. We now have to have five.